Hi guys, I uh, hope everyone's well. This is uh, Now Spinning, uh, Volume 4, which is well, basically the fourth, uh, <laughs> the fourth uh, in the series of Now Spinning, uh, which is a series of videos, if you're not familiar already, uh, that I do on a weekly basis where I just show stuff that I'm, I've played, and that's it. So, I always start with what's playing in the background because, you know, it just sort of makes sense. Uh, and uh, this is a recent, fairly recent um, find uh, for me. I discovered these guys, uh, this guy actually, after reading a review, buying the record off the review and then discovering that I really like the record and then discovering that he has other stuff that I, I like even more. And this is the one that I like even more. So this is um, High Speed, The Afflicted Man. Basically the guy that I'm talking about is The Afflicted Man. Yeah, The Afflicted I'm, I'm sure in the right direction. Uh, this is a Gershon, Gershon Rishu. Uh, limited 500. Uh, you should be able to find it still. Um, it's a Rishu of a 1983, I would like to say. 1982 actually, uh, 1982 release, um, of this release was, <laughs> what am I talking about? This record was released in 1982, you can find it, there's like the original version which goes for a bit of money, there is a bootleg version that I guess that is now a little bit cheaper and then there is this version. So I, yeah, I found this one. So yeah, uh, Afflicted Man is a, is a guy that did quite a few records. He is predominantly punk inspired, but he sort of takes cues from, you know, guitar led music that punks dis despised and hated. And as you can hear, he just, just rips, man. It's just uh, an ongoing solo fest. It's unbelievable. It's really well made. It, it's well made in the sense that it's not made really it's just a live session that is recorded straight from you know from the console from what I for all I know I don't think that there is a lot of you know um, processing or mixing or anything I, I seriously doubt it and that's why it's really good and yeah this is highly 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 recommended um, something that uh, that comes highly recommended as well and you probably know about it already but you know that's what I was spinning really so that's what I'm going to show uh, if, for some of you that may know it I I own the can box set so I popped it open it was open anyway I didn't pop it open just now I yeah I popped it open when I when I got it I got it as a gift by the way uh, so Got, I opened and um, played Can, Tagomago, just classic seminal stuff, really. Uh, Future Days and uh, Ege Bamiasi. So, yeah, I played these. I haven't gone through the whole box set to be honest. I, I, there are some albums that I, I, have, I don't own, I do own these. Back home, I do have uh, versions of these. I don't know um, what if they're boot, bootlegs or not. I think they are like proper reissues that came out like in the 90s. Uh, but yeah, and um, so you know, if, if you're gonna pick some albums from the Can discography, I guess that these three should be them. Um, Monster Movie could be one of them as well. You know, that's a good candidate. I don't, uh, I don't see why not. But I guess that the ones that are most well known are, you know, Tango Mago, uh, which is not. This is not the original uh, cover as well. From what I discovered like a few years ago, there is another one with uh, uh, Damo Suzuki in front of it, which in the, in the cover, which is the original apparently. I don't know. And this one. But yeah, I mean, come on. You know, it's can, it's like classic crowd rock, unbelievable hypnotic rhythms, just surreal, you know, um, uh, um, lyrics, you know, you're losing your vitamin C and all that kind of stuff, and beats that are just 
much. Yeah, it's like, it's unbelievable. It's really, really good. Um, you probably know it. If you're watching this channel, you know Karen. I don't need to sell it to you or anything like that. So, you know. I won't even bother, you know. I won't even bother. Another thing that I've been listening to lately is this one. Uh, it's uh, Le uh, uh, Revelateur. <laughs> Excuse my terrible French accent. Fictions. This came out in 2010, uh, and it is what's his? Oh, uh, this guy. It's Roger Tellier Craig. He's my guess is that he's Canadian. He played guitar for Godspeed You Black Emperor, and this is his solo album that came out like yeah, 2010, and um, he's uh, into synths apparently. So this is a synth album. It's beautiful, beautiful synth music. If you if you're into that kind of thing, and it's just you know floaty kind of ethereal music, really, really good. Highly recommended. This is really beautiful. Almost new age-ish in in its own kind of weird kind of way. Um, yeah, really good. Highly recommended. Do check it out if you can uh, find it. I also pulled out from the shelves this one. Uh, this is a uh, circle, uh, if you can see it. This is a title I will not try to... Tantumus, Tantumus... I don't know, is it Finnish? Anyway, Circle is a, is a Finnish band uh, and um, they have... they're quite prolific, they've done like loads and loads of records and they are not into one style. So this is, as it says here, this is Hypno rock, <laughs> hypno rock, whatever that means. Um, but uh, they've done like, you know, new wave of British heavy metal albums that they sound like really that that they have that kind of sound. They've done psychedelic albums. They've done this one. Now this one is a little bit of a mixed bag for me. Um, they they do parts where it's like completely, it's it's almost. Noi, noi ish sounding, uh, psychedelia, and there are parts that are, uh, yeah, the song stopped because it's only three songs. This side has only one. That was Sun Sun. And now we're going to listen to Get Stoned Easy and my favorite, Zip Ed. So yeah, what was I saying? Oh yes, uh, so yeah, they do, uh, they sound like uh, Noi, uh, sounds like crowd rock, psychedelic, repetitive, that kind of motoric kind of rhythm, and they do some songs that are like, uh, I don't know, uh, like, it's not heavy metal, but it's it's sort of, it's weird. Uh, it's not hypno rock because, yeah, those songs that those motoric songs they do give you like you know they do sort of hypnotize you in a, in a way but then the other ones come up and you're like oh my god what's happening press next at least for me so it's a little bit of a mixed bag but overall you know they have you, you should check their output there are some other ones that are really really good um, I haven't heard I haven't heard their albums in a long long time so I cannot really you know guide you to one specific one but yeah I have another another couple of them which I've uh, have been re re reissued so I'll give them another go and uh, tell you which one I think from the ones I have here because I have other ones uh, at home. Another thing that's been playing uh, lately is my girlfriend's obsession uh, the Arctic Monkeys this is not my album by the way she bought it so she's buying records as well not that, not that many though, um, but she did buy this one, so yeah. Um, you know, think it, you can say whatever you want about the Arctic Monkeys, but I sort of like, I do like their last one. I think that is really, really good. And I would never listen to it, but you know, it's my girlfriend, so you know, she's, she's obsessed with them. We're going to see them live, by the way. Anyway, I'll let you know how that goes. Richard Young's uh, Beyond the Valley of the Ultra Hits, 
which is a bizarre kind of uh, um, title. This is amazing, amazing album. Highly, highly recommended. This is um, this came out originally as a limited uh, CDR, and uh, sort of um, Richard Youngs uh, is doing. Usually his style is like electronica, sort of uh, bedroom kind of, uh, you know, lo-fi kind of stuff. Here he sounds a lot like uh, John Cale, at least that's what, that's what he reminds me of. John Cale in, um, oh, what was the album? Never mind. Anyway, he reminds me of John Cale. And it's it's really well made album. I mean, you know, fantastic songs electronic, acoustic, all these kinds of elements, you know, put together, blended and with really good songwriting and, you know, singing and it's really, really good. Highly recommended. Do check this guy out, Richard Young. Uh, some classic stuff. I mean, yeah. I did a video just for this one uh, not too long ago when it was actually re reissued. Uh, the heads, uh, relaxing with the heads, uber classic, fantastic, psychedelia, space rock, whatever you want, with the sexiest cover in the history of covers. I think that they outdid themselves with the next... no, no, I think that maybe this one is sexy, I don't know. Equally sexy to the next one. Uh, they do, anyway, they do really sexy covers. Not all of them, all of the covers that they do are sexy, but uh, this one and the next one are just fantastic. Amazing music, super highly recommended. If you like, you know, psychedelia, space rock, fuzz rock, whatever you want to call it, this is, this is the shit, really. Um, recently reissued, I think, yeah, 2012. I bet that you can still find copies of these, and if you do find one, do get it. I, the only thing I, I regret is that when it did come out, I didn't get a copy. I, I only found it on CD, so I don't have the original you know, 500 press from 90 whatever, 96. Yeah, well, a friend of mine bought it and he spun it for me and I was like, oh my god, this is like the balls. And yeah, so I missed out on, the, on that one, but I got this one. Super highly recommended. I mean, no, no crap. Continuing classic stuff from Australia. Radio Birdman, Radio Zapier. I mean, no needs for no need for introduction. You know, rock and roll, punkish rock and roll, I guess. A very rock and roll. The Radio Birdman, uh, more rock and roll than punk, I would say. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if if you have ever listened to uh, what's his name, his name, uh, he's uh, not Dennis Tech. Who was it? Ah, oh, never mind. Never mind. Anyway, you know, classic uh, record. This came out in 19 what? 78, yeah, 1978. I won't say 1977, but it's 1978. It's a very iconic kind of band, and um, at times it feels that their iconography is much more powerful than their music. Although the music is really good, I mean, I have no complaints there. But I think that you know, if they managed to do a little bit better there, that you know, they would rank up a little bit higher in my, uh, you know. Um, whatever <laughs> doesn't matter anyway super classic stuff I mean come on I mean what am I saying it's Radio Birdman I mean classic uh, next another classic and again reissue but well yeah what can you do and this is uh, the sound and uh, Jeopardy uh, released in 1982 uh, 1980 1980 sorry 1980, um, uh, super classic, I mean, you probably have heard I Can't Escape Myself, if you haven't, then you should. Um, I had this record uh, when I discovered it, because I can't, can't Escape Myself actually is one of the 
staples of uh, playlists in in the in the bars in Greece. It was like you know it would play at least once once every night at least once, um, and you know it was like yeah this is an amazing song I need to get the album so I I bought the album not this one obviously I have a, a Korova reissue that you know it's like I have it back home so I thought that you know it might be a good upgrade um, and uh, I listened to a Candace game myself and then the rest of it is more punkish sounding and. You know, I just didn't, didn't listen to the album. How silly of me. Anyway, um, eventually I got into it and I, I did listen to the rest of it. But, and, you know, it's one of those albums where, you know, the first song is so mind-blowingly good that it's hard to get into the rest of it, but it is really good. I mean, you know, it has Missiles, Jeopardy is amazing song, Resistance, uh, Words Fail Me is... Uh, it's just a fantastic song. Sandy, um, the guy, uh, what was his name? I can't remember. He committed suicide, and yeah. So, but he gave us this, and um, you know, from the lion's mouth. I cannot distinguish between this and the lion's mouth. I think that the lion's mouth is a little bit more consistent, but I like this as well because it brings me back memories from for, uh, from this song. So it's really good. Um, what else have I got? What else have I been listening to? This is mixed here, so I have some new stuff that I don't want to show now. Uh, listen to this one, Ensemble Pearl, uh, which is uh, Stephen O'Malley, uh, Michio Kurihara, William Herzog, and uh, Atsuo, which whom I'm not familiar with came out in 2013, my guess is, and it is, um, yeah, heavy, drone, psych, whatever you want to call it, this is an amazing album, really good, hadn't played it in a long, long time, and I was like, why the hell haven't I played this, I have no idea, should play it more. And is there anything else mixed? Here with the new and the old. 17 minutes, oh my god! No, I won't do any more. I think that's it. Okay, that's it. So, thanks very much for uh, sticking with me. Um, you know, leave your comments, um, let me know what you think. If you think that I'm talking rubbish, if you think I'm an idiot, or if you think that it's amazing, I should continue doing it, or whatever you want to say, basically. You know, any ideas, suggestions, whatever. So yeah, leave your comments, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, subscribe if you think that this is the kind of thing that you're into and you're interested in and want to you know, want to see more videos like this, or unsubscribe if you decided that, hell, this is terrible, and uh, yeah, let me know what you think. So anyway, see you around.